Good afternoon. My name is John Sutherland. I'm the Fazenfeld Head of Environmental and Ecological Engineering. And uh, I have the distinct honor to introduce our third speaker this afternoon over the lunch hour, and that is Professor Amisha Shaw. I'll just tell you a little bit about her. She uh, received her bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, she then went on to receive her PhD in environmental engineering from Georgia Tech. She held a uh, postdoc position at Yale for a few years and then um, had a postdoc position at the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology. She came to Purdue in 2014 uh, her tenure home is civil engineering, and she has a joint uh, appointment in my, my department. Uh, in terms of her research, I'll be fast. Uh, her research is experiment-oriented experiment -oriented and focused on fundamental chemical and physical processes related to environmental engineering. Um, I will note that she is an absolutely outstanding mentor and uh, teacher. Um, she does an amazing job in mentoring her students, and in fact, uh, uh, the students recently recognized her with an Instructional Excellence Award uh, in Tripoli. So with that brief introduction, Amisha. Gosh, okay. Um, so uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, I thought I would just share my scientific journey um, that I've had here um, really throughout my life. Um, again, um, you all know who I am, so I'll get started. Um, so I actually wanted to put this schematic up because this is really a representation of what I really love to do. I love to study chemical reactions in um, any type of environmental system. And so this means starting from a reactant and looking at all the different transformations that occur um, and intermediates that are formed. Is this not a laser? Oops. Which one's the laser? <laughs> There's no laser. Okay. All the intermediates that form and um, finally reaching product stage. Okay. So um, I love to study how um, fast these transformations are, how slow they are what type of external forces impact them, and oftentimes um, maybe there's a catalyst that needs to speed things up that may be interesting to look at. So I love to, to examine these processes, and I thought it was a really interesting parallel to my own life um, as me, a little baby, starting out as a little reactant and then going through life's uh, transformations. Um, oftentimes there's external forces that kind of impact who you are. Um, sometimes there's very good mentors and parents who catalyze your transformations. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Um, and yeah, um, end up with me as um, someone who really loves discovery and hopefully has a good impact on society. So that's kind of um, where I'm coming from here. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a sense of what inspired me, um, <laughs> It really didn't come until my teenage years. Um, I think I was just too busy trying not to kill my younger brother before that. <laughs> Make sure he stayed alive <laughs> when I was babysitting. But um, this was really um, when I was in high school. Um, I really loved to read and I opened up National Geographic and I just thought it was the most amazing thing. I learned about different cultures, learned about human evolution and I just ate it all up and I loved to learn about the beauty of science and exploration. And I was really drawn towards environmental problems and grand challenges related to sustainability and different aspects of nature and, and all those things that um, we are gonna be challenged with in the next century. And um, I thought chemistry was such a huge and integral part of this, this process. So just to give you a little bit of how I kind of went on from there, of course, education is really the most valuable thing. I um, went all the way down to Georgia Tech in Atlanta, a wonderful place to live. Or sorry, sorry, I didn't first. I first went to college. Um, and that's my hometown, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I have to say that 
I actually took an introductory physics class that really was a game changer for me. I loved it. I loved the instructor. I thought it was so exciting. And so I changed um, from a chemistry environmental science degree to chemical engineering after my first year. Well, unfortunately, I did more process engineering than chemistry, so I got a little bit um, disappointed there. That's why I have a little um, sad, smiley face. So I needed to kind of um, reroute myself. So um, I went ahead and went to grad school down south in um, Atlanta, Georgia, at Georgia Tech. And there I really found the true place for me, and that's in environmental engineering. And I got to use, really look at physics and chemistry within an environmental framework, which was really exciting. So I learned about how to um, remove contaminants from water treatment, how to understand different physical and chemical processes that are involved in making water quality better, um, both in the US and abroad. And I just really love environmental chemistry, looking at those chemical reactions that I talked about earlier. And um, with that, that was really a great um, scientific aspect of graduate school. But I actually want to point out that um, my advisors were my mentors for life. And that was really the first time that I realized that um, they're, they're with me for the long haul. They taught me so many life lessons at that stage. I made so many mistakes and they, they really uh, rerouted me. So I can't um, emphasize the value of those mentors enough. Um, from there, I went up straight on 95. Oh wow, five minutes, geez. Went up straight up 95 and um, did some postdoctoral work. Um, I really took that knowledge to new, new realms, really. It's just the science that I did, the chemistry that I did, I got to take it to new aspects of um, new applications, both related to carbon capture at Yale, and then I got to look at um, ballast water treatment, which was really fascinating, and trying to understand how the, we could mitigate the transfer of invasive feces um, by disinfecting ballast waters. And so there was some really cool chemistry there. Um, in terms of research um, at Purdue, and I really make the statement at the top, which is kind of encompasses me as a whole, um, be myself, discover, inspire, be creative, and at the very end, do excellent science. That's very important to me. Um, this project here is really a classic example of all the things that I love to explore and learn about. Um, looking at how um, chemical reactions of monomers in a homogeneous solution can change as we start looking at 2D structures, so a 2D polymer. And what are the different, um, how does the reaction change as we move to these larger scale systems? Can we um, evaluate each aspect individually, but then they're not translatable? So I think this, um, this connection is very intriguing. Um, I also look um, have ongoing projects that are a little bit more globally related to problems like climate change. So looking at how organic sulfur can undergo photochemistry to form these really interesting low molecular weight sulfur compounds that um, undergo cooling when they reach um, the atmosphere. And so what are the cool transformations that occur in the water phase than that, than that, that subsequently affect atmospheric processes. And of course, getting some really interesting data there related to how do these chemical reactions take place over time and what are some external forces that can affect them. Um, with that, I just want to give a shout out to wonderful collaborators that I had, um, both with um, Dr. Welton, looking at wildfire impacts on drinking water. This was very exciting. Um, basically, um, my graduate student here gets to burn a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> and there's some clear um, effects of how wildfires can affect drinking water um, distribution systems and communities that um, are affected by these problems. And I also had another um, set of collaborators that was also interesting, very exciting to work with um, that is related to indoor air quality. And I think we had a really fun time looking at how disinfectants that we've been commonly using during COVID can really affect um, the indoor airspace. And we got to measure a lot of cool things. With that said, um, 
I hoped that I hope that I've been able to take all of this chemistry that I've learned and integrate it into my classes effectively. It's been really fun um, to uh, collaborate to work with the students. Um, one shout out that I really want to make is that one mission I have is to really help women in STEM. And um, that goes with women in engineering, but also to mentor undergraduate and graduate um, women to enhance their scientific identity, scholarly productivity, and to inspire them to also go on and do MS and PhD degrees. So that's a very important part of why I'm here. With that, um, Students are the centerpiece of my success. I hope that they can learn things from me and it can inspire them not only to be excellent scientists, but to be excellent human beings. And of course, I would like to thank my foundation, which is my family and friends who have made me grow into hopefully a beautiful tree. <laughs> so yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you, Amisha. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Rao Govind Raju. I am the head of civil engineering. So that's the other department that Amisha belongs to. So she's served by two heads. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fine. Let's, first, let's see if uh, we have any questions from the audience first. Yeah. Great presentation. So. Uh, w w one of the slides that you mentioned about the uh, uh, climate uh, change mm -hmm. and uh, what uh, have been your experience in linking this you know, short-term kind of the process or interest to very long-term you know, the climate you know, the changes of concern. So what have you been your like, again, ex uh, interaction or strategy to move forward? Yeah, this is really interesting. You know, this field kind of goes from really fundamental small scale chemistry that I work on to people who, um, you know, look at who model global scale um, sulfur budgets across the globe. And so I remember talking to them and it was interesting that, you know, all the model inputs that they have um, don't actually match what I see at the fundamental level. So there's this disconnect. And I think what is really required is for me to sort of try to translate that, you know, kind of move closer to them and they move closer to me so that we can come to a, a compromise and an understanding of what's really happening because it's really difficult for them, you know, for for these model inputs that they have, of course they have to go out into the middle of the ocean and try to do all these experimental things and so looking at these really small scale things is really challenging but yeah that's really kind of the biggest problem that we face is trying to merge those two sides and getting us together but it's fascinating <laughs> i have another great question from professor alabach how do you manage joint relations with triple e and civil <laughs> well, I have two answers, one for when these two are in the room with me and one where they're not. <laughs> no, John and I can leave. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's just another thing to put on your list of time management. I mean, being a successful fa faculty member is all about time management. And so this is just another thing to put on the list. But um, it's funny because they're actually, from the department heads go, they're quite different from each other. So, <laughs> so if I don't like one, I just go to the other. And if I <laughs> <laughs> don't like the other, I just go to the other. So that's, that's a wonderful beauty about that. Yeah. But um, I mean, it, it's the same with mentors, right? You, you take the things, you learn from all of them. And you learn not only the good things about them, but you also learn the bad things. And so it really kind of helps you and forms, forms who you are in the end. But nobody's perfect. And so um, we just take the good and try to improve over time. But yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. 
Amisha, really enjoyed the presentation. Yeah. One thing that struck me was, uh, you know, the the amount of uh, policy impact a lot of your research, you know, can have. And I know some of your collaborators are <coughs> trying, and I feel like, you know, to move the needle on policy impact, and it's not, it's, it's a hard thing to do, but maybe based, you know, based on your experience, maybe at Georgia Tech, and then, you know, w w what are some things you know, universities can do to help open that door, make it a little, that a little easier to have that? Well, I really want Purdue to be a learning lab of sustainability. Mm -hmm. Like, why can't we be an example for what a sustainable community can be? Um, and I think that would be an excellent way to move things forward. Um, I mean, unfortunately, like with all things, it's not just about the science, it's about change. People don't want to change and people are stuck where they want to be and it's just hard to convince them to, to create a more sustainable future. Um, but I would love, yeah, I would love for us to be an example and stewards of that, but yeah, I mean, politics is here as well, so, you know, what are you going to do? Um, I just read an article about trying to get high-speed rail in California, and it was horrible. So, I, yeah. These are things I would love to see. I would love to see high-speed rail from Indianapolis to Chicago via West Lafayette, but will that happen in my lifetime? Probably not. So, yeah, just all these things that I think would be sustainable, but... Anyway. <laughs> Larry. You get more cynical when you get older, unfortunately. <laughs> I used to be much more inspired when I was 22. <laughs> yeah. So, so, Amisha, thank you for your Larry. talk. Um, so thinking of inspiration, um, what are the topics in your environmental chemistry courses that is, that is inspiring to students, or what gets them really excited? I think students really want to be part of the solution. I think they really want to make the world a better place. And anything that I can teach them that lets them do that, I think excites them. I think they really want, I mean, I know, you know, maybe, I, maybe they just want to go out and get jobs and make money, I mean, but I hope that they would be excellent stewards of of the earth and think about sustainability and think about um, equality and take all of those things into account when they as they grow yeah I, I yeah <laughs> I don't know it's not about right or as my mentor, or, <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, while, while others are thinking of questions, <coughs> uh, I was going to sort of chime in and what uh, Jan Allenbach said. I understand, you know, having two heads, it can, uh, you know, two departments, it has its pluses, but, you know, you do have to manage uh, two department, two department heads, two different rules. So I agree with Amisha, it becomes a management <laughs> problem. I think when John and I leave the room and when she answers the question, <laughs> you know, I hope uh, I'm not always the bad cop. You know? <laughs> the, uh, yeah, Amisha, I do have another question for you. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use your analogy, which uh, I think is very apt for a university. In my simplistic view of thinking, you know, for a university, the faculty and the students are the ingredients, the reactants. You know, and for the chemistry to work and for things to go to the right direction, everything else is a catalyst. Mm. You know, facilities and what else, you know, but these two are the main ingredients. And, you know, and being a good mentor you know, and working with students, uh, what do you think are the important catalysts for the reaction to go in the right direction? I mean, take a few moments to think and... Oh, wow. Uh, 
How truthful do you want me to be here? <laughs> oh, be brutally honest, you know. Brutally honest? Yeah, for me at least. <laughs> okay, might as well. If I don't get a paycheck next month, we'll, we'll know the reason why. Faculty that are amenable to change. That's, that's it. That's, yeah. Faculty administration that are amenable to change. It's hard, I mean, yeah. That's, it's not just here, it's just life. That's how people are. But I would love to see us be a role model in some way. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Amisha. Thanks. Yeah, thank you all for coming. I just wanted to remind you, what, when is the next? Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we will gather again for the third um, uh, Celebrating Associate Professors event uh, on November 2nd, on Wednesday, so do put that on your calendar. And uh, thank you for joining us here uh, today, um, you know, really to celebrate uh, Fang Huang, uh, Maggie, and Amisha's success. So thank you all.